Hey, this is Gary Kay. We're here live on the show floor at the DSE 2022 show here in Las Vegas. The first DSE show since 2019. And digital signage is not like the rest of uh, the AV market. Um, it's very different, but it uses a lot of AV gear. And I'm here with Amal Hazelton, who's with Moment Factory. Amal, what do you do with Moment Factory? I'm working on uh, development and strategy for business development for our new projects. I work with a lot of the people that we see on the floor here today, and it's great to see everybody back now after the pandemic. All right, so Moment Factory, you've seen their work. You just don't realize you've seen their work. Tell them what you do. Uh, well, about 30%, 40% of our business is working on giant multimedia installations that are predominantly LED in public spaces. So we're talking about LAX Airport. We're talking about Newark Airport, which is just about to open and all of the states will be looking at that. Uh, Moynihan Station, which is the busiest yeah. train station in the United States. So those kind of projects that have a digital signage component, often rev gen, but also a, a dominant amount of creative content going into it. And what you're doing is you're helping the customer, the client, turn that into whatever the facility is into an experience. And the LAX is a good example of that. Uh, how many millions of dollars worth of LEDs are there? And it's not primarily for, necessarily for advertising, it's an experience, right? Well, it started out certainly as a placemaking exercise. Yeah. So there's about 70 million was invested into that project back in 2013 when it opened. And, uh, but the, what they wanted to do was to really anchor the visitor experience. If you know airports, they actually make most of their money off of the retail food and yeah, beverage yeah, component. Yeah, so they're actually course. mostly a shopping center that <laughs> happens to have Airplanes. in and out airbound <laughs> traffic. Yeah. So the, uh, the retail zone is where they invested most of the digital signage to create placemaking, increased dwell time, increased visitorship, and ultimately increase the rents that they make from the retail. Right, and so with, with signage like this, you can do real-time content distribution and, exactly. and you can even, even make it interactive interact. and in fact I, let's go to you've got a great sizzle reel that kind of shows projects that you've done absolutely so let's play the sizzle reel so you can see what we're talking about it's a little bit like the campfire in the sense that people have gathered since the beginning of time around campfires to tell stories and gather in communities and now the fire has changed and the technology has changed and the stories have changed, but the basic human need has stayed the same. We do it in public. It's in a way the through line to all the different types of work that we do across many different mediums. The we is about the people, it's about the team, it's about all those people that are contributing to the project. It's so we is about a culture, it's about a way of thinking whereby everybody is working together as a team. We value a variety of different inputs. We take from everything around us. We've been really lucky to have such an amazing variety of clients throughout the years, whether they're rock stars, cities, museums, brands. And this collaboration that we managed to create within these different projects taught us so much throughout the years and we've really grown through our relationships with all these great people. All the experience we design here take place in different environments, in different contexts, with different kind of public. It's really a great opportunity for creators to be able to each time have a different canvas. The risk is an essential element. Placing people in a state of being allowed to be wrong and make errors, it's going to give them the confidence to uh, really push the limits and try new stuff. And this is where uh, innovation comes pushing the boundaries of our work, doing magic, hijacking technologies, doing lots of R&Ds, trying to figure out how we can bridge between cool stuff happening in other industries, bringing them to our works. I find that magic is the alchemy between how we deal with technology and how we customize technology to suit our own purposes. We use interactivity and technology to bring people together in the same space and engaging with our content, with our story. We live to experience. When we create experiences, we're creating a moment that, of people's lives. How can I make the people feel the same amount of excitement in this moment that I'm feeling now while I'm creating it? It's such an emotional feeling when you poured your heart and soul into a piece of work and then you have the crowd give that same level of magic back. The emotion is at the core of all our projects and I think that's what also defines us and differentiates us as well. 
So it's the combination of all these things that we really care about. We think that this collaboration can create a new campfire, a digital campfire, and that it can foster communion and bringing people together in new ways that we can't even imagine today. And that's why we do it in public. All right, that, if you don't understand what they do from watching that, then you don't understand anything. As you can see, millions of dollars, $70 million in the LAX airport to build an experience. But, you know, you started your, 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 your beginning started in live events. So you have a unique experience and unique um, uh, skill set because you understand how it is, what it's like to entertain people in real time and then apply it to an installation. Exactly. So we're about 450 employees now. And we've been around since 2001. So over the past 22 years, I'd say the first 10 years of our existence was really uh, making a name in live entertainment. Nine Inch Nails, Lights in the Sky yeah, tour, working yeah. with Chris Milk, working on giant Cirque du Soleil shows and installations around the world. And then in around 2009, 2010, we started taking all of that know-how from the live entertainment, the technical side, which involved a lot of risk, yeah. and the content side, making a great emotion, making spectacle and transferring that into giant placemaking real estate development projects. Public spaces, airports, commercial developments, lobbies of uh, giant towers, office towers, things like that. Ultimately, you want to turn it into an experience so that people have a, a memory of it. And people, we are visual memory. We remember things that are visual. So we are going to take something, and instead of just putting, you know, hey, here's our brand and here's our product, you're turning it into an experience that could include that, but also could gamify it, it could make it actionable, or it could make it sort of like immerse you in a different world, right? Well, all of these developers that are looking at digital signage as a possibility in their business plan have five objectives, okay. and they all share them. One is they want to be top of mind. They want to be the first place somebody thinks of, as an office tower to rent for my employees, as an as a airport, as a destination, as a theme park, as a museum, etc. All of those are using digital signage more and more. Okay. Secondly, they want to have more visitorship. Thirdly, they want those visitors to spend more time in their destination because that's how they can right. rent and make money. Fourth, they want to have an engagement. They're no longer just this, here's a space, here's a person, and there's no relationship between it. They want to be connected to them on social media. And, things. and these kind of digital signage displays are the perfect way to start capturing yeah. people, feeding into them. And ultimately, they love those spaces because they're full of content, they're programming, and when they're interactive, you just mentioned interactivity, yeah. that is the real That's hook. the holy grail right that's there. That's the holy grail because yeah. people suddenly can influence the physical environment that surrounds them, which they've never been and able to do. And you can prove proof of concept of sitting there watching people take out their phone and interact with it or use their fingers and Not interact Not just their with phone, it. walking down the street, and all of a sudden the wall changes yeah, because of you. Or you can take a selfie with it yeah. that's automatic photo booth. Those kind of things are incredibly powerful in creating engagement and repeat visibility. Leadership. That's what destinations depend on. So if you're an integrator, and you know the problem with this kind of stuff, the way I look at it is that the customer in many cases wants this, but they don't even know how to ask for it. That's so they might ask for an LED, problem. and you're going to sell them an LED, and really they want you to sell the creative experience that goes along with it, and that's what Moment Factory does. That's what we do, and I can say that as many leads as we get from end clients finding us, talking to us, and hiring us to design and produce these kind of ex in installations, we're getting just as many projects coming from some of the best technology companies in the world. Some of the people on the floor here at DSE calling us up saying the client bought X million dollars worth of LED. They need content they, on it. <laughs> they don't know how to program it. They don't know what they want to put on it. Can you help them out? It's sad that it's being done backwards. But that's the architectural process. Yeah, it is. It is. It that's, is. It's like let's build the brick and mortar, and then afterwards we'll figure out about what to put the in there. Part. <laughs> yeah. All right, check them out at momentfactory.com. Momentfactory.com. I'm all. Thank you very much for coming. Pleasure, Appreciate you uh, dropping by our uh, broadcast center here at the DSE show in Las Vegas. It's still just day one. We got a lot of interviews, a lot of content, a lot of people to share things with. Keep watching our content, and of course, see all of our DSE coverage at ravepubs.com. Hey everyone, this is Gary Kay. I am coming to you live on the show floor at DSE 2022. And uh, this has been a great show, day two. I'm now with Brian Mazeros of Open Eye Global. Brian, yeah. hey welcome Gary. to uh, the rave station here. Thank you for having me. This is very cool. Yeah, I like and, uh, well, I appreciate it. Uh, tell, 
you know, tell tell our viewers what you do. Yeah, sure. So, um, so I run an agency uh, called Open Eye Global. Um, Hey everyone, it's Gary Kay. I am coming to you live on the show floor at DSE 2022. And uh, this has been a great show, day two. I'm now with Brian Mazeros of Open Eye Global. Brian, yeah, hey welcome Gary. to uh, the rave station here. Thank you for having me. This is very cool. Yeah, I like and, uh, well, I appreciate it. Uh, tell, you know, tell, tell our viewers what you do. Yeah, sure. So um, so I run an agency uh, called Open Eye Global, uh, 21 years that we've been around for. Uh, so we're an experience design agency. We work through, you know, across multitude of different verticals, but really it's create experiences that connect people to the place. So and everything from interactives to experiential to large visuals um, is really what we, we specialize in. Well, we have a sizzle reel that I want to yep. play right now so that people get an idea of the kind of projects you work on because yep. it's impressive. Yeah. All right, so let's run that. So what is your favorite kind of project to work on? What, what do you love to do? You know, I, I really love, we've been doing a lot more um, storytelling and experiential walkthroughs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've been very fortunate in working with Madame Tussauds and the whole Merlin group and really kind of bringing to life these stories that people are somewhat familiar with, but now the opportunity to actually physically explore. And there's all these moments of, of how do we bring that story to life through technology, through traditional design tactics, and just different ways to kind of it's just different. It's not. We're not merchandising. Yeah. We're not selling something. We're we're telling a story. So it sounds like you like, you like doing different projects, yeah, as opposed to doing the same project over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah. Even though you can be yeah. more profitable. No, doing it's, the same it's true. It's, it's it's true. But you get into that rhythm where I think you just need to break. I think creatively, <laughs> yeah. your mind needs to get away from putting uh, price tags on screens yeah. to actually doing something that's a little bit different than that. So do you see uh, post pandemic? Do you see a lot more? Uh, experiential projects coming into retail spaces because we have to find a new way to use the retail or are they using experiential to drive more people into the spaces where retail already exists you know I think it's I think it's both I mean I think before the pandemic you always saw retail start to go more theatrical uh -huh. especially in, in flagships and you know it was, it was less about having the product it was more about the brand and the brand story yeah so I think that you know that trend is obviously if you mean up like more. what Nike store has done Nike and stores, yeah. um, the flagship stores Adidas has been doing that uh, yeah. I mean other clothing brand stores yeah. have been you doing be that as well soccer player if you pronounce it Adidas yes. anyway go ahead <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, we work with them so that's uh, <laughs> but uh, it is not Adidas it is Adidas Adidas yes go ahead um, <laughs> but uh, no I, I see I see a lot more on the experiential I think yeah. a lot of brands are realizing that that is what distinguishes them from you know, their competitors. And I think they want to tell the story about the brand. They want to make a relationship. They want to make that kind of connection. And the only way really to do that is for some kind of experiential storytelling means. And so that's what drives traffic into the store. People want that experience. I think for, you know, pandemic, I mean, we're so cooped up. Yeah. You know, and people wanted to experience something other than a Zoom call. Yeah. And so now you have this opportunity. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> but it's, but I think it's good too. And I think they're realizing too, is that not everyone is going to be getting on a plane and going to Disney. They're yeah. not going to, to here but they have an opportunity to go to their local museums, the local retail stores, and kind of have these little moments and, and experiences that resonate it's, and then it's they're It's interesting because what, what, what used to be the art museum, we're updating it because we have just a different culture of people. Yep. Meaning yep. When, our, when, we, when our parents were going to museums, they expected to see artwork hanging yeah. on the walls. When we go yeah. to a museum, we expect the artwork to, work, to move. Yeah. Like yeah. we, we don't expect it. No, it's, we it's, don't have an it's, appreciation it's entirely for true. that art. Well, you have that expectation. I think everyone yeah. going somewhere now has that expectation of some type of unique moment that you know it's, that's not going to be static. Yeah. That is going to be, you know, blowing out. That's the wow factor. I'm yeah. going to take a picture of that. I'm going to post that on. You know, that's that's do what you, people want. Do you is your business mostly in the U.S. or are you global? We have been actually doing more work over in Europe over the past couple. Well, months. I was going to ask you so, about that because Europe yeah. is ahead of the U.S. Yes. in retail yeah. signage, yeah. especially in experiential. Yeah. Um, and also, I've noticed that. They've done a better job using smaller footprint, yep. meaning that the front of store is smaller. They're using a lot more technology yes. to drive it. Yes. Back of store is larger. Yep. So they don't put much inventory up, but what they do is they find a creative way for you to pick what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the kind of stuff that you're working on? That, that is. Um, 
you know, it's 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 very much customer engagement. You know, creative ways to create yeah. that engagement. Um, a lot more with sensors too. You know, one of the things we're kind of realizing is that people, you know, are so used to touching a screen, and so you have to be creative in how yeah. you trigger those actions. So, obviously, you know, lift and learn has been around for a while, yeah. but then you use proximity sensors, you use other triggers that capacitive sensors, you know, things that you can touch that aren't digital, but then create a reaction on a display. And we're trying to bring a lot more of that into it to be very creative. Yeah. And what's nice is that, you know, we work very closely with, um, you know, fixture manufacturers and fabricators that are starting to kind of understand that that's something they need to think so about. So they in need their to offer it as a raw component they rather do. than they as, do. A, as a, yep. you having to go in after the stores have yep. built. Yeah. Did yeah. you, um, you know, one of the coolest projects I saw over the years was the Adidas footwear wall. Uh, did that ever come out globally, or is that a concept <laughs> where you'd lift the shoe and yeah. it, and it would tell you all yeah. about the shoe, but then yeah. you could order it right yep. right from the screen? I do see that kind of concept as, yeah. as the future. I think Apple's come the closest yeah. to that, right? Where you're standing there looking at a product, yeah. you scan a QR code, yeah. and you order it, and they bring yeah. it out to you from the back. Yeah, I, you know, it's Apple and 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 the you know the the, the shoe concept yeah. and you know, but I think I still think you know the challenge you do have is there's there's a cost associated with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and so. You know, you can make the argument, well, technology's cheaper, yeah. and it's like, great, but when you do a lot of it <laughs> in yeah. a concentrated area. And, and if you've done it is, once, you want to see yeah. something different and the plus next also, time. It's not just, it's not yeah. that, it's also time for development as well. Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a creative component to it, there's programming to it. But, you know, the solutions are there, and I think more retailers are just realizing that budgets need to change for that, and that there is a real, you know, return on that kind of investment and, you know, back ultimately. into, ultimately, for yeah. them. So if there's a good strategy. So if, I, if I'm a... Um, I'm an integrator, and I'm doing digital signage, and I've got a client that's come to me saying, hey, I want to hang, I want to do something cool in my storefront. Obviously, you're a great source for them to come to. How would they reach out to you? Yeah, so you can find us online, openeyeglobal.com. We're all over Twitter at openeyeglobal as well. Very consistent with the Open Eye Global on Instagram. And then, um, you know, I'm around as, as well, obviously, on, on show floors. And, yeah, and, and, and you should check out their Instagram, Open Eye Global, uh, because uh, you'll see some cool projects. Check them out online, and of course, uh, thanks for watching. All of our DSC coverage is at raypubs.com. Just click on the DSC link. Hey everyone, it's Gary Kay.